a little bit of a fraud because I have to tell you to start with, I use Twitter probably as much for um, personal reasons as anything else. Um, we started off, or I started off using Twitter about a, a year ago. Uh, for those of you who use it regularly, this will be pretty much uh, pedestrian, but uh, for those of you who have uh, yet to join the, the Twitter sphere, uh, it is basically a micro blogging website. Uh, which means that it's a dynamic stream of text messages, uh, effectively, that, that runs constantly. And you might think of it maybe in the same way that we think of the, the ticker tape with the market feed, uh, for any of you who watch the stock markets on a, on a regular basis. It's, it's kind of the same thing, except that it's uh, text messages uh, or tweets. Uh, you're, you're, you establish an account in the same way that you would with any of the social uh, media sites or even an email account. Uh, and there are a couple of things that you start off with. You, you send your tweets, those are your text messages on whatever you would like to comment uh, upon. You decide which people you want to follow, so who else's tweets would you be interested in reading. And depending on what, you, what way you want to frame your account, you can open your account up for, for, to the public. Uh, and anybody who wants to follow you can follow you. Or if you're uh, maybe a novice or getting used to Twitter, as I was at the start, I kept my account private, which meant that only people I agreed uh, to or that I signed off on could join my, uh, join my Twitter feed or could read my tweets to begin with. Now, after two or three months of watching how Twitter worked, I finally just opened my account up uh, to the public, and anybody who wants to read um, my, my tweets can, uh, can read them. But the best way of thinking about it is this, this never-ending stream of text messages um, and you are in control of your Twitter account because you only read the text messages of the people that you're interested in. Uh, in a way that's a danger of Twitter because you can of course create a, a reinforcing uh, ever uh, decreasing circle of opinions uh, that always agree with uh, that always agree with your own so it's important to have a you know, consciously at the start when you set up your Twitter account uh, to get some advice on, uh, on, on broadening it out and getting as many and as interesting you know, set of opinions as you, uh, as you possibly can. Um, there are different ways of working on Twitter and again this is the box here, this is what your Twitter screen looks like, this is the box here where you type in your tweets. You can only use 140 characters so it is, a, it is not a labour intensive uh, exercise. You can tweet pretty regularly because you can only put in 140 characters, so you're limited to two sentences, effectively, in terms of what you can, uh, what you can say. There is a Twitter language uh, that you get pretty used to very quickly. You use all kinds of abbreviations uh, and ways of summarising things, so much so sometimes you actually have to read things out phonetically to actually get any sense of what they are. Now, for those of you who text quite a lot, you'll be pretty familiar uh, with this anyway. Uh, once you've typed in your, your tweet here, there's a little tweet button down here, and you press on that, and and your tweet goes into the live feed of, uh, of, of Twitter. So this I took from earlier this morning, so these probably relate to the presidential uh, election or the inauguration which was happening earlier. In terms of conversations that take place on Twitter or events that are happening on Twitter, it has a very useful little mechanism so that you can follow particular conversations or particular events, and that's the use of hashtags uh, and little short abbreviations for events. So today it was all about hash president uh, Pres 9, which is the ninth president of Ireland who was being inaugurated at a half eleven. Um, so this is a, a little hashtag. And you can create your own hashtags for your own particular events, for your own courses, uh, or you can follow other, uh, other hashtags. So for those of you, I'm a political scientist, so from my world, we spend most of our time looking at RTE PT, RTE primetime. So you want to see what other people are saying about the RTE primetime feed. Uh, hash Vin B, Vincent Brown, uh, so you get to see what people are saying about Vincent Brown. And it's a way of following a conversation. You're joining a community of other people. You don't necessarily have to follow all of these people all the time. Maybe you're not interested in their opinions the entire time, but you might be interested in a particular event that you're following uh, with them. Depending on your personal interests, RTE Rugby, you can get all of the, the feed. If you press on this particular link, it'll bring up all of the information today on all of the teams for the Heineken Cup matches over the, uh, over the weekend. So the hashtag is a way of creating a conversation or tapping into a conversation that's pre-existing. So it's a very good way of, 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 I suppose, developing and structuring the community and the discussions that take place. And just the last thing then in terms of the uh, Twitter is that you can have conversations uh, with people. With so you can reply to other people's tweets. You can agree with them, 
You can disagree with them, you can send them information, advice, links to other pieces of information, and the way you do that is by clicking on the reply button, and that will show, show up here in your at, uh, at mentions uh, a section, so it shows up for me on at Teresa Reedy. In terms of, of Twitter, this is the people you follow. So I follow all kinds of uh, people. I, have, uh, I follow 558 people. So there's 558 people whose thoughts on things come into my account on an ongoing basis. You could spend all day reading Twitter. I mean, you could literally sit there in the morning and it would continue like live television all day long uh, if you had nothing else to do, especially if you have 500 people in your account like, uh, like I do. So the kinds of people that I follow, you see there during the week, Mr. Burr, Lascone put something up on Facebook. I actually don't have a Facebook account. This is the only social media that I engage with at all. Uh, so he has uh, he made a little comment on Facebook about how he wasn't uh, how he wasn't resigning. Well, he's gone now, but he also has a Twitter account. Uh, Bundeskanzlerin is Angela Merkel. She put up tweets about the uh, the uh, euro during the week. So I quickly included her in my account because Twitter is becoming a very important tool in politics uh, because people are starting to say things on Twitter and using Twitter uh, to like heights to provide kind of uh, in thoughts on certain things and as a kind of a preliminary way of getting feedback on particular uh, on particular things so from the point of view of politics it's very important that you see what people are saying not just in Ireland we saw Twitter was kind of important in the course of the presidential uh, campaign we, it was very important, I suppose, in the, the general election campaign earlier in the year. So you get quite a lot of, of information on Twitter from the people you, uh, from the people you choose to follow. Uh, these are my tweets. So these are the things I put up this morning. So you're going to see how vacuous my thoughts were on uh, the clothing that uh, the, the new First Lady was wearing, um, the President-elect arriving in St. Patrick's Hall, um, um, the, the RTE stream. Uh, and then this is about a citizens' assembly that's taking place in, in Belgium at the moment that we're following online. Um, so you can kind of, you, you have a list of your, your own tweets and at any time you can see your tweets here. Which brings me to an important point. This is public. My account is open to the public. Uh, some of the people on Twitter don't appear to appreciate that this is a public forum and anybody can read what, you've re what you have written once it's put up there. So for people who begin to engage with Twitter, it's important to keep that in mind, that this is a public forum. And in that sense of the world, uh, all of the libel laws and any other uh, of these uh, constraints uh, would appear to apply in Twitter as, as far as they do anywhere else. So it's important that, that, you know, you keep, uh, that people keep that in mind. In terms of who I follow, I follow all kinds of people, politicians from Ireland all over the world, Irish political parties, UK political parties. Um, you get to follow global and national commentators and media analysts who put up tweets on various events that are happening. They put links to their opinion pieces in newspapers from all over the world. You can follow newspapers all over the world, polling companies, because I work on... on um, on elections quite a lot. Academics, uh, there's a growing number of academics starting to appear on Twitter because uh, I'll talk a little bit more about using it in, in teaching, but it's a tremendous way of uh, publicizing your research, uh, getting feedback on your research and a source of information for, for research. All the uh, professional associations are starting to put up Twitter accounts, international organizations. Uh, most of them have, have Twitter accounts. So for example, some of our work is with the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund, the World Trade Organization. They put up tweets about all of their working papers, new data that's available, events that are upcoming, presentations that have been delivered. Um, and it's a tremendous um, access into a world of information that uh, simply as a, a person with an eight-hour workday or a ten-hour workday or a twenty-four-hour workday, you just wouldn't be able to compile all of that information. Policy institutes, whatever, uh, a big long list of professional ones. I also follow my own friends uh, on on my Twitter account, so um, I'm not entirely sure how to reconcile this uh, yet because I do apply to them occasionally. Uh, and uh, personal interests, so I like uh, fashion and I'm interested in rugby, so I follow all the rugby team and um, the IRFU. So you, you can kind of compose or, or design your Twitter account um, in any way that you want to pursue any interest that you, uh, that you have. Primarily the reason I got involved in it is because the political science community uh, took a decision that we were going to get very actively involved in the political reform debate uh, that started uh, last year. Um, one of the, we, we went on to, we have a blog, um, we also started to use Twitter much more, um, I suppose, much more as a collective 
uh, to try and raise the profile of Irish political scientists and to try and influence the debate on political reform, particularly institutional reform. So we initially started off linking most of the tweets to the political reform debate, but then as we got kind of used to it, we, we started to broaden it out and building kind of profile in other areas of Irish politics, communicating research uh, on any, any different uh, events that are happening, and then commenting on TV programs, events like today's presidential election, uh, and you build up a, a following of people who are interested in the same things that you are interested in, who want to see what's taking place. Uh, maybe they can't attend something themselves, so you give them the score in the rugby matches, maybe you tell them that the president has just been elected, maybe you tell them what he says in his inauguration speech. It is a, a way of providing or accessing uh, information. In terms of using Twitter uh, uh, in teaching, uh, there are different ways. You can have your own personal account, um, which I personally try not to, to do. I kind of keep my, my personal account separate. But I have a, a program Twitter account, and I have a project Twitter, uh, Twitter account. So you can link them in uh, in different ways. You can create new accounts. Accounts are free um, so far. I'm not entirely sure how that's going to work in the longer term. Uh, the advice that kind of anybody using Twitter pretty uh, regularly will tell you is you need to be using it frequently, especially if you're using it in teaching. You need to be using it in an ongoing way. So once you get up and running and you get all the students following uh, the account on Twitter, you need to be using it as a reasonable, uh, reasonably frequently to keep the students engaged and to get them to engage, particularly at the start. Because at the start, you will have to do most of the work, but after a while, they start to kind of take up the mantle and get, get engaged a, a little bit more. How do we use it? Um, it's a brilliant mechanism for, for communication. It's wonderful providing information about upcoming lectures, events, um, field trips, um, deadlines for, for anything. Uh, it's a great way of, of providing uh, links to diverse resources. Uh, so you can put in the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, the Irish Times, BBC News, um, all of the polling companies across the world, so for my elections module, uh, and they get constant access to this information. It also reminds them that this information is out there, uh, because if you just give them a standard lecture and say, well, now it might be nice if you went off and went on to Gallup or you went on to YouGov, uh, they'll go, yeah, maybe. But if they have a Twitter account where the, the continuous stream of YouGov poll results are coming up, it reminds them all the time that it's available and that it's pretty easy to access. Uh, and then they can just click on the links and that takes them to the, uh, the polling, uh, polling results. It was great during the Irish presidential election because I was teaching Irish politics. So the Twitter feed, they would follow Red Sea and they would just go and get the actual reports. So they would get more than the headline figures on the polls. They'd get much deeper analysis and it was much easier for them to get hold of it uh, using Twitter. Uh, so that, the, the project that I'm really starting to use it for at the moment, this has just got off the ground last week, is an Irish aid project. It's, on, uh, it's in a political economy module and it's going to be on governance, democracy and sustainable development. Uh, there's going to be a series of seminars and workshops on this particular theme. The assessment is integrated into the project. I have learned as well over the years, so I have. Uh, communication is really an essential element of the project, and this is what Irish Aid want to, to really uh, see happening, is that the, the whole theme is communicated much more, uh, much more extensively, and this is where Twitter is going to, to come in. First of all, we're going to use it to follow people that are going to provide us with information uh, and, uh, and resources for the project, but it's also going to be a mechanism for student communication and discussion where they discuss the themes themselves. So you can put up questions. It's just taking them out of Blackboard and the discussion forum there into a kind of a broader space where they can interact uh, with people beyond the particular uh, project. The project itself is going to have a one-day conference which is taking place in February, so they're going to use that to promote the conference. So they will sign into the Twitter account. They all have their own following. We'll use the main account to tweet it. They will retweet it, which is kind of just sending the text message out again uh, to all of their followers. And then on the day of the conference, we're going to have live tweeting. Uh, so they will talk about what the speakers are saying, what information is being passed out, recommend uh, uh, the, the resources that are being discussed uh, on the day. So this is what the account looks like. They started designing it last week. Uh, so it's, it's based on, it's using a lot of case studies from Africa. So they picked this particular image off of the internet. I'm sure there is no copyright for this image. Uh, so this is, uh, we're not entirely sure. We'll, we'll just keep that quiet for the time being. So all of the students are going to follow. There are going to be 80 of them in total. And the agreement is that at that point, 
when we have everybody signed up, they will follow all of the people that we have already put into this account. So I've put some people in here and they've recommended other people to, to include. So, so far we're following Jan O'Sullivan, who's the minister who kindly gave us the money for the project, uh, Barack Obama, uh, Paul Krugman, the uh, Nobel Prize winner, uh, Will, Will Hutton, who was on the, the Morning Ireland this morning, if anybody was listening in, uh, a couple of other, the World Food Programme, the Council of Europe, uh, the, the Telegraph, Deutsche Welle, the German News Service. So once we have collected, we we reckon we'll get about 150 people into this, uh, this account. Then all of the students will follow each other, and then we will follow all of these people. So we will have a, a quite a large community developed, uh, and we're going to be able to use it pre pretty extensively in terms of both promotion and communication in the course of the, the programme. Um, I also have a UCC Politics uh, Twitter account, which we use just as just a programme-based one, so it's mostly for information. It's just a, another way of engaging with the students, communicating with them, so we provide all the kind of standard kinds of information. Again, we, we link this one in at the start to the political reform debate and the general election, uh, especially as more and more candidates started to go on to Twitter, and Twitter started to become much more interesting. People were saying things that were quite controversial on, on Twitter in the course of the election, uh, and then the students were able to engage in and follow and participate in discussions uh, as well. So this is what our UCC politics uh, Twitter account uh, looks like. This one, um, it varies. It's quite active at times if there are particular events going on, but it, uh, it uh, becomes uh, less active. In terms of using Twitter, uh, there's a lot of advice out there. There's a really excellent guide that's been developed by the LSE, um, which provides you with all kinds of uh, advice on how to develop your following, uh, how to get the students involved, how to use it in teaching, but it also provides you with all of the advice on being careful with your Twitter account, don't say anything that's libelous, uh, don't say anything that's going to embarrass your university, um, and you also have to provide a lot of guidance to the students because it is a public profile or a public forum, uh, and their tweets will be there in the longer term, and they get lots of advice about being careful about their Facebook pages and not putting pictures and photographs up there that could come back and backfire on them. The same is equally true of Twitter. They have to be careful. And if you're going to use it in your teaching, it's important that you kind of make students aware of that. Just generally finishing off, I would say um, uh, I, I find it very useful, uh, but I massively overestimated the extent to which the students were uh, technically informed. Um, there's quite a percentage of them that are technophobes, an extraordinary percentage of them that are, that are appalled at the idea that you would, you, you would use this. You need to provide a lot of advice on how to use it, how to set it up, um, because it, it really is the case that there's a, a significant minority uh, that are, are not uh, technically adept at all. Some of them love it, they think it's great fun. It adds a new layer to the learning environment. Um, it, it's a new way of providing information and providing advice. I don't think it's going to replace any of the other forms of, of teaching or the kind of more traditional ways in which we, we work, uh, other, uh, even things like Blackboard and Moodle. It is just an extra layer, uh, but it's a fun layer, and it's a way of engaging with very dynamic conversations uh, and tremendous uh, resources for the, for the students. So from that point of view, uh, it is useful. And the last thing I'll leave you with is some research from the United States has shown that students Students who use Twitter do much better than their Luddite friends, 10% better in general, but that was just a US study, so we've yet to see the outcomes here. <laughs> Thank you. Can you archive this material and, and build it up into more than a series of one-liners? Can you create a, you know, a larger piece of work from putting together all the comments of a particular person that you're following and sort of compile you know, the, the, the text, if you like, and then cut and paste it? Well, the timeline is there all the time. You, you can, your own tweets are recorded, yeah. so you can click on those and they are always there, so you can piece them together if you want. Other people's tweets, um, I suppose you, 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 start, you could go into their individual timelines. You can actually click on anybody's profile. So if, if I follow you, I can click on your yes. profile and I can click on your tweets and see the entire timeline of your tweets over a year, five years, what, whatever. So you can, you can copy and paste those if you oh, wanted yeah. to use them more, more, more coherently. Yeah, yeah. You, you could do that, yeah. I was thinking, as you said, that you know, it's just another, another thing you can use with the students. And I, think, I thought it might be quite a nice thing for the students to critique you know, and, 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 and discuss how does this form of data help us more than other forms, or is it better or worse? Or, you know, so I think it is, it is something that they could reflect on and discuss. Yeah, I think it could be a little bit overwhelming if you have too much stuff coming in, and I, some of the students do complain about that. How are you supposed to read everything? Yeah. You're not. But John Norton said he has five, he, he follows 400 people. They are doing better. <laughs> <laughs>